So yeah, Nick, what were you doing in the beginning? I noticed there were some different balls. I was giving you some high spin, you noticed, right? Yeah, like after the second ball, all of a sudden the ball just popped up. Yeah, I was giving you high top spin. Yeah. So I wanna work on that with you today, how to handle high top spin. Okay. All right, so let's say if you played against an elite level player, let's say like a Rafa or something like that, or, or a Djokovic, and they give you that real heavy spin, the ball that's not only high, but it's also penetrating. Okay. There's really not much you can do there. You might as well pack your bags and go home. And I'm even talking about myself. If I had to face Rafa, I'd pack my bags and go home because I don't like hitting balls up high on my backhand. It would be absolutely an, a nightmare to play against. Yeah. And you'd have to almost be a, an elite level player to be able to have a chance against that type of tennis. So it's one of the most difficult balls to play in tennis if the combination of height and penetration is there. If there's height and power, it's very difficult because here are the options that you have when you play against someone like that. So you could decide, okay, I'm gonna take the ball early, okay? Mm -hmm. If you played against someone like a Rafa, for example, you could say, okay, I'm gonna take it early, but the problem is the ball is so lively off the bounce that the timing is super difficult when you take it early. Right. And you're gonna be making tons of mistakes. Okay, you can just let the ball play you, in other words, hold your ground and play the ball higher. Now, you don't wanna do that because now you're gonna be taking the ball above your shoulders and anytime you take a ball above the shoulders especially on the backhand side you're really weak and you don't have much of a chance then the other option is to actually back up and let the ball come down and that's an impossibility because by the time the ball starts to come down you're going to be in the back fence yeah so really at that level the only way to play that super heavy like elite level tops and ball is to take it early but most people misinterpret taking early with taking it like off the bounce. That would be impossible as well because the ball is just too fast off the bounce, right? So you wouldn't be able to take it below the waist. At that level, the only way to play the top of the ball would be to take it uh, between your waist and the chest area. That's the best chance. Okay. Right. Well, here's the good news. You don't have to face an elite level topspin ball when yeah. you play at the 4.5 level. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's very rare. Even at the high level, you don't really see... Um, that quality type of top spin with that combination of of height and power so there's a lot more options so the options are the following you could take it on the rise and you can actually let the ball come down a little bit there's going to be instances where you can do that but it's going to depend on your ball recognition so you have to recognize whether the ball that's going to come down is going to push you too far back into the court or not if that's the case if the ball is going to push you too far back and you're going to be too far back there close to the fence you're going to be in a very defensive position it's going to be tough yeah. to get power from back there however some tops and balls don't penetrate that much and it's always easier to take balls when they fall down from the apex the reason why is that the more you wait the more the ball will slow down and then the timing becomes much easier when yeah. the ball is rising the timing is a lot more tricky okay. so the way i want you to distinguish whether to back up and hit the low hit the ball below the apex or whether to take it on the rise is the quality of the top spin so it's going to depend on your ball recognition you have to recognize the ball in flight whether you're going to to back up mm -hmm. or you're going to actually take it on the rise so if the ball's like real high over the net that's a good indicator that it's going to be deep and not necessarily it's not necessarily though, because look at ball like this like it's going to be super high over, over the net but it doesn't have a lot of spin so this ball actually uh, you can take it below the apex. Yeah. It's a lot easier to take that type of ball below the apex. It's really the penetration of the ball that matters. So this ball right here is going to penetrate a little bit more. And I'll look at the second bounces. It's in the, in the top of the fence. So that ball you want to take on the rise. You don't want to wait for that ball to drop down because you'll be stuck in the fence by the time you hit it. So it sounds like it's a combination of watching you and observing the action you put on the ball. And if it's a lot of spin, high over the net, a lot of power no that's no? not it because again remember we talked about this a couple of times you're not going to be reading what i'm doing and able to determine what's going to happen it's a very inefficient way of doing it because you don't really know what i'm doing yeah i might hit a ball like this it doesn't mean anything necessarily this could be a, a more of a defensive uh, type of topspin over an offensive topspin you really don't know quite that well it's, it's best to judge the ball after it's been struck and judge the ball in its flight path and then make the determination so that's reactive tennis, right? That's what you were saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you want to do it that way.
Well, the first ball you hit, that was high above the net, yeah. but it didn't have much action. The second one was just... Well, I'm going to give you some examples now, okay? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. give you some examples. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. So I'm going to feed you balls that are not going to be temp penetrating very much okay. and balls that you can actually let come down from the apex and rip, okay? And then I'm going to feed you balls that are going to have a little bit more penetration on them where you shouldn't back up because why? You're going to be too far back, too defensive. You're going to take them on the rise. In both of these instances, because the ball is higher, you want to strike the ball a little bit higher, somewhere between your uh, above the waist and the chest area. Somewhere in here, you're going to strike it. You never want to let the ball come above your shoulder. You're going to be weaker up here. Yeah. So both for the forehand and the backhand, you want to take it between here and here. That's how you have to time the ball. Okay. So whether that's on the rise, you're going to strike it somewhere in here, or whether the ball is falling down, you're going to strike it in here. So let's start with the ball, high balls that are not penetrating and you're going to rip them and you're going to take the ball below the apex. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, so the apex is the highest point. Highest stops, point. And then when it starts coming down then... Exactly. Yeah. And the reason why you're doing that is going to be a lot easier. It's a lot easier to do that because the, the more you wait, the more the ball slows down. The more time you have, the more accurate your shots are going to be. Okay. Okay, so you, if you say, let's say you, I give you one of these weak balls that doesn't penetrate, you would take an unnecessary risk in trying to take the ball too early. It doesn't matter. Just picture the pros when they get a floater. They always wait. Yeah. They don't take it early. When they get like a floater ball that's coming in the middle of the court, they are not taking it like early. They're letting the ball, they're waiting, they're letting it come down, and then they rip it because it's a lot easier. It's, it's completely unnecessary to take a risk and try to take it, take it lower. The only time you're going to take it on the rise when there's no other options. No other options. That makes sense? Yeah. So at the elite level, there's not a lot of options. When you talk about ATP, like the guys we watch on TV, they don't have options yeah, because no every ball is penetrating. They're ripping uh, the heck out of the ball. So they can't be backing up too much unless they play maybe with very slow balls on slow surfaces. But generally speaking, balls are taken on the rise on the ATP Tour because there is no other way. Otherwise, the guy, by the time the ball comes down, they'll be in the back fence. Right. So the only way to play is to play on the rise. But, now, at you, but at your level, you have more options. That's the good news. Right. Here we go. Let the ball come down. Good, and rip that ball. Keep your feet moving. Good. Good. Take it at the ideal height. Shamir, find the ideal height. Go again. Much better. It feels good, right? Look at that time. You have time. Now do it wrong on purpose and take it too early. Let's see what happens, okay? Okay, do it again. On the rise. Again, on the rise. You know what's interesting is actually that you will lose power often when you take the ball too close to the ground. Because what happens naturally to your swing path as you're taking the ball close to the ground is that the swing path becomes much smaller. Because it's out of your, your optimal strike zone. You're taking the ball very low and naturally that you can't use the body as much and the stroke gets shortened because of that. Okay. And also it gets shortened because intuitive players know that if they take too big of a cut when the ball is too low that they will miss. So naturally they shorten those strokes. So they feel like they're taking time away, they are. So that's a plus. But the negative is that, you, like you say, you lose speed. I'm, so it really I'm glad you said that. Same. I'm glad you said that because most people think that when they take the ball, a ball like this early, they're gonna take time away. It's completely irrelevant. You're not taking that much time away, number one. Yeah. And also, people often think too much about what's going on, on the other side. What I recommend, even at the, to the 5.0 level, is to worry about what's going on on your side. Worry about yourself. Take care of your own game. Don't compromise your own game for the sake of thinking about the opponent. Yeah. You know what I mean? You because you're compromising your stroke, thinking you're going to do something spectacular to your opponent by taking your opponent's time away, which is actually not even that true. To be quite honest with you, we're talking about milliseconds. There's not much of a difference in time between taking the ball below the apex and taking it below the apex when it's falling down. There's not that big of a time difference in that. Okay. Right? So you don't, you don't worry about that. What I find with a lot of recreational players, they, they're worried too much about what's going on on the other side. And in fact, they're compromising their game because of that. Yeah. That so don't sense. worry about that. What is the most optimal way for you to strike the ball, that's what you should be thinking about. Getting in the best position. Okay, the fact that you're hitting this ball a little bit later 
you're better off hitting a great shot a little bit later than hitting a horrible shot and taking time away from your opponent. Yeah. And compromising your stroke, possibly making a mistake. Also, like when I'm holding my setup, I'm creating an anticipate like anticipation for the other guy. And he doesn't know I could at last minute go cross court. Again, you're worried about the other guy. Remember, you don't have to worry about the other guy too much. Yeah. Worry about yourself. Worry about myself. Don't worry about the other guy. Again, you're too worried about the other guy. Yeah. Remember, if you want, to, you're thinking, I'm going to take time away from him. But by doing that, you are making your stroke more difficult, which is probably going to go wrong. Most of the time, you're going to make a mistake. Make it easy for me first. Make it easy for you, and you'll make your shot most of the time. And you hit it harder and probably for a winner. You okay. understand? This is yeah. the, the mindset that I need you to have. Create the time for yourself. Think of what is the most optimal way for you to strike the tennis ball. And that is, on this, in this particular instance, it's definitely when the ball is coming down because the ball is not penetrating that yeah. much. No, I was just saying creating time and space between me and the ball. Like you said, as it's coming down, I'm creating time and space and hitting it right where I want to. Where That's can... an excellent point, Shamir. I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because the more you wait, the more time you have to set up. Yeah. Right? When you take the balls early, often your setup is not that great. You're not in that good of a position. You'll make a mistake because of that as well. All right. Do a couple more, okay? okay. Same thing. And keep ripping that ball. Come on. See, on balls that are this weak, I don't really need you to hit backhands. You know what I mean, Shamir? You can hit most balls with a forehand and run around. Excellent. Keep hitting those winners. Come on. Good. Again. Rip. And last one right here. Give me a rip. It's all right. Give me another one. A little more angles from here. Come on, put it away. Yes, come on. All right, now here comes the tricky part. Okay. I'm going to make the ball penetrating more. So if you try uh, to let the ball come down like you're doing now, you will be stuck too far back in the fence. You'll be too defensive, so I don't want you to do that. Okay. All right, so now you have to take it on the rise. And the timing is going to be more difficult. So what does that mean? We need a lot more intensity and we need a lot better, we need a lot better footwork. Okay. Okay, because we need to be in the right place at the right time. I don't have the luxury. These were luxury balls. Cause you have were... plenty of time to set up now. It's like you're now on the rise. So yeah. the timing has to be much better and okay. the intensity and the feet have to move much more accurately. Is the compensating for the rotation on the ball? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, here we okay. go. Come on. Wow. That was on the way down. Take it on the rise. Shamir, come a little closer. A little closer? Okay. Yeah. Take it on the rise. Come on, on the rise. That's it. On the rise. Come on. On the rise. Footwork. Here we go. On the rise. Come on. On the rise. Good. On the rise, Shamir. Again, on the rise. That was a little too high. Don't let it get up over your shoulder. Don't let it come above your shoulder, okay? okay. Below the shoulder, chest height. On the rise. You see? Again. That was on the way down, you see? So what happens in addition to you being too far back, often when it's on the way down and it's fast, you'll actually hit the ball and while still moving backwards and now the chance of missing is much greater. Can I move it back a little bit on some of those balls? Well, listen. Because I was like a foot, two feet from the baseline. But see, it's not so easy to take it on the rise. You see, you're more no. comfortable letting it come down. Well, yeah. But, but in this instance, when the ball is penetrating more, you're going to get more problems by going, letting the ball come down from the apex. You have to take it on the rise. Maybe should I come in a little bit more, like a foot on the baseline? Well, you can, you can, you're going to have to come in. You're going okay. to have to, you have to, I was, you're, I was you're just go, standing in the baseline. You're going to have to move your okay, feet. So I'm gonna you're going to have to find the ball. You, the ball is not going to come to you. You're going to have to set it up. Yeah. Because what often what happens with players is just stand around. Yeah. With high topspin balls with penetration, they end up hitting it above their shoulders. Like I and, did. Yeah. And then it's super weak, the ball. Yeah. All right. So footwork is crucial. Come on. Good, Shamir. Come again. Again. Better. On the rise. Come on. Oh, no. oh, again. Footwork. Come on. On the rise. Don't take it too low, though. This is where it's tricky. You don't want to take it at the waist. Because, again, remember what I told you earlier. The lower you take it, the shorter the stroke becomes. It almost turns into like a bunt, into a three-quarter stroke. When you, want to, when you take it at the chest, you can actually take a full cut, a full swing. So that's the difficult part. Timing it so that you take it on the rise, but it's right here, the chest height. One thing I love about 
Medvedev. Yeah. He's like watching him has helped me with my high ball because he taught me that it's okay that I can finish around my neck. You know, like I can go high and then just let it go. Yeah, he does finish around the neck. He Every can. shot, like he's just yeah. like, it's, even if it's low, he's still like. It's a the fine neck. finish. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's more, so it's an individual it. preference. It's okay. But when it comes to the swing path on the high balls, if you want to be able to put spin on it, you can't come underneath the ball. It's a little bit tricky, but you can come underneath the ball like you always do, but then make contact towards your chest. So there's still a little bit of a low to high movement and then going around this way. Got it. Yeah. Most players at the, let's say, 405 level, they're a little bit more comfortable coming straight at the ball like this. Yeah. And it turns more into a flat shot. It's just a very horizontal shot. Yeah. But like, if you watch the elite level players, they will almost always come from underneath. So it's like on the, the waist, forehand. it's like from the waist here, yeah. and it slowly goes up. Up and then around. And, then around. and if you want to do the Medvedev finish, I have absolutely no problem with that. Yeah. It is going to be more horizontal when the ball is higher. It's more difficult to go here. I know Rafa will still go here forehand. even on high balls, but yeah. most people find it tough when they're hitting the ball up high to continue going high. They're more, more comfortable going across. Gross but if you, if you come from underneath, it was, you come, it's a little bit easier than continue going up even when it's higher, even just a little bit here, imparting some spill, spin on the ball. Okay. Now, if you're closer, Jump. closer to the net, you can actually come down on the ball. Then I can come down. Yeah, yeah and you can, you, can come, you can come here and then wrap it down towards the waist and, and hit, it, hit it downwards. Okay. Here we go, Shamir, come on, on the rise. Okay, but that's risky because you're taking it too no, low. I took, I took too low, right? Yeah, I mean, you made it, it's a great shot, but can you do that 10 times in a row? Right, it's not, it's I doubt it. Yeah. All right, so here we go, take it a little bit higher. Okay, but move your feet more. Come on, don't get set too early. That was bad. Come on, get your feet. Don't set the feet too early. Keep your feet moving much longer. Go again. Set it up. Come on. Best one so far. You like that one? One for 20. Come on. It's a little too high. That was good, actually. Do that again. There it is, Shamir. Excellent. That feel good? Very good. All right, now what happens if it comes to your backhand? Uh, I'll slice it. Don't slice it. Don't slice? Because it's too defensive. There's not much you can do with a slice. It's fine, but I'd like you to maybe do something with a type of ball like this. So go ahead and come over it, okay? Too early. Go again. Go again. Okay, it's the same rules. We don't want to let the ball get too high. We also don't want to hit it on the way down because we're going to be off balance, falling backwards or too far back. So we need to take it around uh, the chest area. We got to take it on the rise. Okay, but then now you move. Yeah, so you let the ball come down. Now, that ball was kind of a dead ball, so it didn't really penetrate. So this was perfectly fine to do. Okay. Right? So you actually did the right thing on that ball because it didn't penetrate that much. It came down quite comfortably. You were not falling backwards. It was, it was okay to do uh, below the apex. Nice. Go again. Come on. It's a little too low. Good, Shamir. Good, Shamir. Good. Good, Shamir. Come again. You're doing a good job, man. Go again. That was too low from my end. Come on, one more. You're letting it go a little too high now. See, the problem is on the back end is that you're going to be extremely weak if you take the ball above the shoulder. More so than any other shot in tennis, you're going to be you're going to be super weak. This is one of the biggest problems players have. I told you in the beginning, if I had to play Rafa, even though I have a two-hander, yeah. I would not like it because I most likely would have to take balls much higher than I'm used to. Yeah. So you have to avoid that. You have to take the ball lower than your shoulder, around your chest height. And even on the backhand, because you have really good fundamentals, you might even be able to take it a little bit below the chest. Because you have really solid fundamentals on the backhand. You can even take it a little bit lower. Anytime you take the ball on the one hand, the back hand, higher, you have to try to continue going up afterwards. Okay, up. You have to use swing momentum. So don't try to wrap the racket. You're not doing that anyway, but yeah. just in general, just keep doing what you're doing, but can always continue going up, up upwards, even when the ball's high. Even when the ball's high, go up. 
on the one one hand the back end yeah perfect one all right. all right so that was feeds uh the problem with feeds is they're not fast yeah so now i'm going to actually hit with you Good. Good. Good, Shamir. Okay, that one I felt like you should have taken earlier. See, I, right, I, I went back. And then you hit it off the back foot. And I just, yeah. So what happened was you left that back end a little bit too weak, too short, I could have blasted that one. Did you at least realize it once you hit it? I realized that this was the more topspin one, the yeah. more aggressive one. But I chickened out and I went back and I said, well, let me just try to hit well, Practice it, it now. But the, the key to, to improving at this is recognize, even when you do it wrong, it's really fine. Yeah. But recognize it and then try to do it better on the next one, okay? And th what would be different? I would have just come in, more aggressive but, feet. Well, you would have tried to take the ball earlier on the rise, which means you would have probably have to go a little bit closer. And just, it's a, you have to be like a leap of faith. You have to like... Well, did, well just, that's a good thing you, br you bring up, actually. You know, that's, a, you really have that's an excellent point because yeah. it does take a lot of courage to take the balls on the rise because subconsciously we know that there's more risk involved, so we're less likely to do it. Yeah. Yeah, so when you play matches, uh, especially when you watch like juniors, they rarely take balls on the rise because uh, they're very scared and they, subconsciously they know that they're going to make a lot more mistakes, so they want to keep that ball and play really badly. Maybe they're not strong enough to take balls higher. Yeah. So they let almost everything come down. Right. Right. So this is something that's very common that players um, lack the courage yeah. to take balls early. But since it's just a practice situation, I want you to get rid of that fear that you have and just do it. It's yeah. fine. Good. Good, Shamir. Good choice. Oh. Good. Good. You took that early, didn't you? Oh. Okay, you should have definitely taken that early. Yeah, that was a... That was that had that was a nasty ball. That, that was quite a bit of penetration on there. You should have taken it much earlier. Good. Don't let it come too high. Come on. Good, show me again. Come on. Early. Okay, good. Early. Yes, Shamir, that's the one right there. Love it. I have a question. Go ahead. The high ones that. Okay, so let's say identify the one that has the more top spin. Not top spin. It's, that's not a good more determinator. Action. More penetration. Because what's penetration? When the ball goes through the court. Okay, so the one, the, when I identify the one that has more penetration. Which means that penetration means it's going to. Once it comes down, it's going to be too far back too close to the fence is going to push you too far back if i find that in the midst of my setting i need to make adjustments am i allowed to come off the ground a little bit oh that's a great question so naturally we're taking balls higher now yeah there's going to be a lifting of the body okay all right so you're going to be setting up so let me show you on that side i'm going to okay. show you i'm going to show you I actually like some of them i was loading but i was like oh this is a high ball no I need to that's a that's my, a great question you go right here on this structure. side and, and feed, me, feed me a ball a little bit higher. Just drop it right here and feed it high. There you go, perfect. Okay, you see, so there I loaded like I always do, which, which is like this. Yeah. Loaded my forehand, right? There's a little bit of a bending of the torso here on this side. But now I'm taking the ball higher. I'm taking it above the waist. Yeah. So naturally what needs to happen, you don't want to stay down and take the ball like this. This makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. So naturally it's going to be a straightening of the body. Right? Yeah. So if you do this very powerfully, very violently, you will actually leap off the ground as a result of that. Just a little bit. It's not, you're not jumping, it's just the, it's the momentum from your... It's definitely not a jump because a jump yeah. would be like a Gilmo Fis or a Nick Kyrgios forehand where you're going like this and going like that. Right. It's definitely not that. It's more of a, if you see like Djokovic, for example, or 
Federer when they get airborne, the acceleration of the forehand where they're simultaneously straightening the body and rotating, that action is so powerful that they get propelled off the ground. If you take a look at their feet, the feet are passively dangling in yeah. the air as they're doing that. So it's definitely something that happens naturally yeah. with the acceleration and you have to allow that to happen. So, so if I did it naturally without jumping, then it's okay? Absolutely, you have to allow the feet to come up. Yeah. Don't hold them to the ground because again, you're straightening to make the higher ball easier. The more you straighten, yeah. the easier the high ball becomes. You play it at a lower level. Yeah. Right? If you don't straighten, if you stay low and you play high ball, you'll take it above your head. Like mm -hmm. with this ball that we're going to accelerate, momentum's going to go up into the ball. How much is okay for this ball when you finish and you turn? Like yeah. some people say, I see some pros, their back on the finish is here. That's Sometimes a, it's here. Shamir, that's another great question. You got great questions today. <laughs> These questions are incredible, man. You like the questions? They're yeah. unbelievable. My wife doesn't like the questions. So, I ask questions. so here's the thing. When it comes to balls with no penetration, you have to use your body more. Okay. This is where a lot of recreational players struggle. So when we're talking about high balls with very little penetration, you're not getting the pace of the incoming ball, which is a power source on the forehand, right? The pace of the incoming ball is a power source. When that power source is gone, we have to make up for that by using our bodies a little more. So yes, absolutely. Just look at the pros. When they get one of those weak balls, they are absolutely unloading on that forehand. Usually on the first ones where you do in those speeds, I can rotate well into those. Absolutely. But the ones that are... Even the higher ones. Can it, I rotate it, just as but much? You, you're going to get off the ground with those too. You're going to use your body too. Not quite as much. It's not going to be as violent of a movement with the body. There's a little bit more of pace coming from the ball, so you don't need to do it quite as much. But naturally, players... Uh, on very weak balls, they unload with their bodies a lot more okay. because the pace is missing. Got it. So Shamir, I got to tell you, you actually do a really good job. For someone at the 4-5 level, your high backhands, for example, are excellent and your high forehands are excellent as well. So you do a great job with those. But this is what I tell to all my students is we could be rallying, having a great hit and having a comfortable hit and you could feel great about your strokes. Yeah. Then you go out on the match court and all of a sudden it doesn't feel quite as great. Why? Because now you're getting balls that are low, they're high, you're being pushed back, you're being pushed forward. All of a sudden, you're getting all these different type of balls. Yeah. So in my opinion, I think it's very, very important to practice uncomfortable balls. Yeah. Because then once you get them in a match, you have hit a lot more of them, you'll feel more comfortable as a result of that. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, man, great job today. Thanks. Fantastic. I, I got the racket tapped out still. What strings are those? Uh, Lexalon 4G. Oh, you play with 4G? I didn't know that. Yeah.